Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel, The Spicy Web. Today I'd like to show you how I converted some uh, kind of messy vanilla JavaScript code to instantiate several code mirror code editors on a page to web component. Uh, I wrapped code mirror essentially in a web component to use multiple times on this page. And you'll also get a sneak preview of a tool I'm building called Vanilla Breeze, which will help you convert tailwind utility classes inside of HTML into a clean, more readable HTML, along with a more semantic style sheet. Uh, so we're not going to dive too much into that tool right now, although I know it's very interesting. Um, I just want to show you what I did here with this conversion to a web component, because I think that alone is kind of an interesting topic. Uh, so this is what the tool looks like, uh, pretty simple. Um, you get to call a component a certain name, whether that's in the form of a class or uh, wrapped in a custom element. Uh, and you can choose which combinator you want to use. And then uh, you can start out with, uh, this is just some example HTML source, or you can paste in uh, you know, all kinds of different examples of Tailwind style HTML. Uh, let's just go ahead and run this conversion. Um, we'll get some cleaned up HTML, and then we'll get our component in vanilla CSS, as well as design tokens from Tailwind, which you can use here or in any project, and then Tailwind's sort of standard reset. And you can just copy all of that out and use it. And here's the preview. Now I have a PR here, which looks identical, and we'll run that conversion here and we should get the same results. So everything looks and works the same, but this version is the old version that instantiated all of these code mirror code editors. Uh, all of this was instantiated sort of manually with vanilla JS code, and this version here, uh, well, technically it's still vanilla JS, but it's all based on web components. So let's take a look at what's changed here in the code. So here we are on the main branch. So this is the old version. We'll take a quick look here at what's going on. So in our HTML, uh, we have these code mirror dash editor tags. And at first glance, this looks like it must be some kind of web component. Um, but this is just uh, an unknown custom element. It's not been upgraded with any JavaScript. Uh, you could just use div here <laughs> and accomplish the same thing. Uh, but I like to write more semantic HTML. So I just already had code mirror editor in a bunch of different places. Uh, and then I had some styles to style that element, kind of wrapping code mirror. And then all of the heavy lifting was here in this overly large index.js file. <laughs> you can see here, like, we're importing some stuff from code mirror, we're importing HTML and CSS syntax support. We're creating this little theme here to override a few things in the editor theme. And then we're instantiating a new editor view for HTML. And then we have some functions to get and set that HTML. And then we also do the same thing with the HTML output. And then the same thing with CSS global and then CSS. Com anyway, <laughs> you can see right away, like this is super messy. This is not dry or don't repeat yourself. We need to make this a lot cleaner. Uh, you know, we could extract all this out into some more generic functions and stick those in a file somewhere. But I like web components because you get that sort of encapsulation for free simply by writing your web component. So let's take a look at what has changed in this new branch. Uh, so first of all, you can see here, <laughs> we've replaced almost all of that messy code with a simple import. Uh, and then we have a few simple helper functions, basically just to query all of these different tags based on their HTML IDs. Uh, and then we can uh, use those very simply. We can call dot value to get the current value in the editor. And then we can also uh, later on in different places. Uh, let's see here. Da, da, da. I apologize. This code is still kind of messy. I need to clean it up a bit. But yeah, basically we can call dot value equals and um, 
you know, set the code in these different code editors. Uh, so all of the heavy lifting is out of this file. If we look in our CSS file, we don't have any styling here in our CSS file for that uh, code editor element. So everything is being done now in this file, code mirror editor. So let's take a look at that. Uh, so right at the top here, we have our imports coming from the code mirror library. Uh, we're setting up a theme that we can reuse across all our editors. And then we are creating our code mirror editor element. We're extending HTML element because HTML element is the base class that you create web components out of. This is true across the board. In theory, there are ways to extend specific elements, like you can extend a button element if you want to customize a button. But uh, there are several reasons I don't have time to go into right now, which uh, are why you probably would not want to do that. Uh, so we're just extending a base HTML element. Uh, we create a private class field for editor view. Uh, we create just basically a string that is uh, setting up some um, styling for the host, which is basically the, the web component element itself. Um, you know, we're not doing anything fancy here. We're not using some kind of library to like, you know, give us a special uh, functionality or syntax highlighting around this. It's just very basic stuff. Um, you know, we could certainly get fancier. We could use a library like lit to write a web component with, um, but this is all just pure vanilla stuff. Uh, now we come to our constructor. You should pretty much always write a constructor for your web component. This is essentially what happens when the component class is first initialized as a new object. Uh, so we're going to call super, and then we're going to set the initial state of our editor view. We're going to create our shadow DOM. Shadow DOM is a way to create sort of an isolated DOM tree within your component. Uh, styles don't leak in and out, and uh, there are various other benefits that you get with a shadow DOM. So we're attaching our shadow DOM to our web component. And inside of that shadow DOM, inside of the shadow root, we are creating a style tag and just sticking in all of these styles. Pretty simple stuff. Now, connected callback is essentially what happens when your element is ready to be instantiated within your DOM tree and, and connected to the DOM. And now it's like in your document ready to be viewed by the public, ready to be used. Uh, most of your code is going to be here in connected callback when you want to set things up like, uh, you know, in this case, instantiating this external object that will operate on the DOM. Uh, but you might want to do other things like add event listeners or, you know, investigate what kind of content is inside of the element that might have come from a user or whatever. So inside of connected callback, we are now setting editor view to a new editor view instance and that's coming from Code Mirror. Um, we have the ability to look at a template tag that may have been placed inside of the element by a user and use that for the initial content of the code editor. We're setting up our extensions here. Um, basic setup kind of just gives you a nice looking code editor without having to do much extra configuration. Uh, we want to use line wrapping. We want to set up our scrolling theme. Um, now, this language from attribute thing, I'll explain in a minute. Um, but we need some kind of way to tell Code Mirror, like, hey, this is HTML code, or this is CSS code, or you know, whatever it might be. Um, and then parent is just like, what's the element that Code Mirror is going to set itself up inside of? What's that parent element? And we're just saying, hey, go to town with our shadow root. Here you go. <laughs> You're in a shadow DOM. You can do whatever you want here. We don't care. Uh, so the fact that that works is pretty cool. And then this is probably not really necessary, but I want it to be nice and clean here. So in our disconnected callback, uh, we destroy the instance of the code mirror editor um, you know, to clean up memory in case somehow this DOM node is disconnected uh, but still lingering around. Um, now we're going to define a couple getters. So editor view just returns the editor view instance. So this exposes a public API. If you're writing some code and you want to, you know, outside of this web component, if you want to get at that editor instance from Code Mirror and do something with it, uh, you can use this getter. We also have uh, get value, which just means that you can call dot value, 
and get a string of whatever is in the code editor. A similar idea here with the setter, you can call dot value equals, give it a string, and now that string will become the code that's in the code editor. And then finally, we have this little method here, language from attribute, which will look at an attribute language dash syntax that you've defined on your custom element. And if it's HTML, we return the HTML function that is provided by CodeMirror, or we return CSS, or we throw an error saying that there's no language support available. Um, maybe there's a fancier way to set this up where it could dynamically import different language syntax functions from CodeMirror's um, various libraries. But um, as you can see up here, you kind of have to do individual imports from different packages. So I think it would be kind of tricky to do this in a totally dynamic way. Uh, so we're just saying, you know, for the purposes of this version of this component, all we care about is HTML, CSS. Maybe down the road we can add JavaScript, and you know, that pretty much would cover all the bases for, uh, you know, web development examples. Uh, and then the very last line here is what you always need to do with a web component: you need to call custom elements, which is just a global object. Um, call custom elements dot define. This is your tag name here, code mirror dash editor. And then this is the class which we have defined at the top of our file. So now if we look at the HTML, you can see that uh, you know, we still are using this code mirror dash editor uh, tag name like before. But now this is a real web component and as an ID. And it has a language dash syntax attribute. So we have a couple here that are HTML a couple here that are CSS. Uh, in this case, we're also supplying a template tag. And inside template, uh, this is just code that um, you know, isn't real HTML code for this application. This is supposed to be processed purely as a string, essentially, to go into uh, the code editor as a default value. So there you have it, folks. Uh, a good example of how you can start out with pure JavaScript code, HTML code, nothing web components related. And then you can essentially upgrade your code to use a web component. And it's really nice because it cleans everything up. It dries everything up. It encapsulates your logic. You can easily use it everywhere. I now have a single file, which I could extract out of this project and copy it to some other project and use. I could even make an NPM package out of this file. Uh, there's so many different things you can do with web components because they're infinitely portable and extensible and work everywhere. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. And I'll see you next time here on The Spicy Web.